Hey you guys, it's me B. Riley. Welcome back to the channel again and thanks for tuning in a bunch. Today we're actually going to get started finishing up a really old project from the beginning of the channel, which is the Thunder Chicken, the Chicken Bocker. Uh, now this thing showed up and it looked pretty and that was about where it ended. Uh, the nut was insanely high so when you were fretting at an open chord it was pulling everything out of alignment and making notes go sharp that shouldn't. And when you were playing over the seventh fret it was also going out of tune because there was so much relief in the neck that uh, the bow was creating an excessive amount of space up around that, that fifth to seventh fret area. Now we've dropped the nut down, we've reset the neck, we've got the truss a little bit better in adjustment, and uh, we've actually got a new-ish uh, nickel-plated 12-string tailpiece off of a 330. This is an authentic Rick part. Uh, the tailpiece that was on there was kind of not really doing it for me. Um, we've dressed the frets. We've uh, taped it off and got a nice rounded edge and leveled the frets because the neck profile on this guitar is actually really nice. For a 12-string, it's a comfortable player. It's not too wide. It's not too narrow. It's, uh, it's a really great intuitive shape. Uh, chips it or not, I'm sorry, whoever shaped this neck, they did a great job and it's got a wonderful profile. Uh, so having those frets dressed now means that we can really enjoy that because it doesn't matter how good the neck shape is, if you're sitting there and you're guiding your hand up along the 12th fret and you just feel things stabbing your fingers, you're just not going to enjoy playing that guitar very much. So we got that done. We've changed the pickup out. That was actually the first thing we did and we've kind of overshot it in some uh, charcoal mist metallic uh, that we got from um, from Gracie's. It was an old can from a long time ago. So we've got all that done and basically the guitar is in pretty good sorts. The only thing is is that we finally got round to the tuners. Now here's the thing about anything Chickenbacher or Chibson. The Chibsons aren't too far off. Some of the tuners have gotten a little bit better. But the Chickenbacher tuners are just horrible. The beauty of it is, is that they're horrible in a very generic way. Essentially, what they're using over there is a Cluzon style tuner uh, with a steel button. The only problem is, is that the ones that they're using are not actually proper tuners. They are chrome plated plastic. The button up here is plastic. The stem is some sort of steel, not very good quality. The casing, it, it feels like tin and almost immediately you can see that there's so much play in this and this is one of the better ones. There are actually other ones where upon disassembling them the shaft just literally fell right out and you could hear the gear just rattling around loosely in there. Um, the screw that secures the actual post to the gear has just worked itself loose and is now rattling around inside. Not a big problem if you've got it on the bench. Pretty monumental if you've got it on the stage. Okay, so now that we got the tuner apart, we can actually really see what's going on here. So first off, we see that we've got a couple where the actual post is just full on falling out. If you look down there, you can see the screw, the retaining screw is just sitting there. And just rattling around in there. But when we've actually got it apart, what we find is, looks like the gear here is a pretty decent alloy. The only problem is, is that it's loose and you can actually hear it rattling around. And uh, this screw up top is fully tightened down, but there's still play here. And you got a lot of fluctuation that the uh, ferrule has to take up. But these are the real issue here, these plastic bushings. And what these do is they sit at either edge, you know, of that gear right there. So what happens is, is when you're tuning up, the geometry allows the spindle to actually ride up in the casing. But when you loosen, it stays stuck up there because there's so much play between these bushings. As they wear in and they crush, they provide more fore and aft inside of the casing, which is also very cheap and not really made very well. So uh, the problem is, is that uh, that destabilizes your tuning. In this particular situation, this guitar had so many different things on it that were a problem that created small issues, but this was a profound issue. This was to the point where it was almost unplayable. The second that you would start playing chords, it would start shifting tune on you because all the tuners were so unstable. Now to replace these, you don't actually really need to get anything special order. Luckily enough, one of the great things about 
uh, all the guitars coming out of China is that they're using fairly typical designs. So all you need to do is order a set of uh, clues on style, uh, Gibson tuners, the post is the same exact height and everything like that. You can get them with a tulip top or you can get them with the steel buttons and they're all pretty much the same. So if you get yourself a decent set of nickel plated aftermarkets, you're usually good to go. Just don't forget that you're going to need 12 of them and you're still going to need oppositional sides because it's kind of a three on three design. Now for you guys and gals that have real sharp vision, you might have noticed the ferrules didn't look the same as they had before. And that was the reason was that we were actually changing out of the factory ones. And what I was talking about before as far as assumptions is, is that yes, those tuners are indeed the same uh, approximate height, but they're just a little bit off. The actual stock ones are a little bit longer in the shaft. Uh, and they're a bit more protrusive on the front of the peg head. So essentially, I had to take these ferrules, the new ones, and I had to grind the top off of them flat and then actually kind of countersink them down and into the actual headstock. Now, I did this by hand, which is why I don't have it on film, because admittedly, uh, <laughs> it was kind of stressful. And I was kind of doing it by hand, but at the same time, um, you know, what are you gonna do? It's kind of a tough thing there. I could keep ordering tuners, uh, but I might wind up inadvertently ordering 10 sets of the wrong tuners. It's part of the modern world in guitars where we're dealing with commerce that is coming from international sources. We sometimes don't even know where these parts are coming from. You might have a guitar that's made in the United States, but those parts might have been manufactured in Mexico or in Korea or in Indonesia or anywhere. So uh, that's the thing. We're always gonna have to massage these things a little bit to really make them agree. However, um, I wasn't too fond with the way that it came out. This video is kind of interesting because it kind of became the video that I didn't mean to make, uh, which is, you know, what do you, what do you take from it when you're doing some work and you don't like the way it comes out? Because I'll be honest with you, as far as this video, um, I don't really like the way it came out. Uh, it wasn't the kind of look I was going for. Um, it just didn't land the right way. Uh, and in the past, I had really gotten to the point where if something like that had transpired and I didn't like the way that the project came out, oh, I'd kick myself around the room about it. You know, I'd hang the thing on the wall and stare at it, you know, while watching a movie at night, just angrily swearing under my breath that something didn't go the way I want. And I always think of that scene in The Simpsons where Homer buys a barbecue grill 
and the instructions are in French and he panics and uh, you see him moments later saying, um, now that's a barbecue grill. And then you realize he's looking at the picture of the box and he says, why the hell doesn't mine look like that? And he freaks out. And we've all had those moments, you know, where we're working on something and it's just not going the way we want to go. But if we really look at it for one thing, most of the time it's because we're hungry or we're tired. We should just be working at another time. Uh, but another thing is, is that it's actually, you know, my takeaway from this is, um, I, I think a lot about this, uh, this young lady I was listening to, she was on, you know, she was on Instagram or something. I'm not going to sit there and tell you it was Socrates. I'll, I'll tell you when it is, but this ain't it. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's just, it's just as valid. And she was talking about what she referred to as the rule of thirds, not in a conventional sense, but in kind of an aspirational sense. And the effect that when we are undertaking things that we care about, that we are interested in, that we're fascinated by, uh, or that we find that we're compelled to do, uh, that you don't want to always be satisfied with your work. Uh, because it's nice to always be satisfied with your work, but that's not going to help you grow. Uh, either you're not being challenged, or you're not challenging yourself, um, or, or maybe, which is something we've all been guilty of, which is maybe you think that the work came out great and there was room for improvement. Uh, so, you know, if you find yourself sitting there and saying, you know, hmm, this project seemed rushed, uh, I didn't like the way it came out, it could have came out better, I could have done a, a you know, a top job comparatively uh, that yeah you know it's not good to feel that way but at the same time uh, it is healthy you know because it does help you get to that point where you say okay well you know I can sit around and kick myself about it or I could sit there and say okay how can I do it better next time how can I be better prepared what tools do I need uh, what do I need to work on what should I practice before I get to that so this way next time I can stand there with my arms folded and and feel really good about the work that's happening and have something in my hands that I could really show around and, and get excited about. Anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Greatly appreciated. Um, <laughs> was up north and all of a sudden the numbers in the channel started really getting crazy and uh, stepping up and they went into like, you know, double what they were just days before. Uh, and that was a lot of fun, really encouraging. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the video. It is a beautiful day out. Hopefully it's just as gorgeous wherever it is that you happen to be sitting. So have a wonderful day and uh, you know, say hello to everybody for us. Look at this devil, he's just sitting up on the desk. He won't ever get out of the way and let me do my work. All right guys, I'll see you next week.